I'm building a little 8 by 8 foot room addition here. First thing I did is if you look up here, I took the existing porch and I stripped the roofing off of it, the siding off of it, the fascia, and then we, we put these two little supports on here to hold it in place. So next thing we did is we dug this hole here, three foot down, called, and then we framed for a footing here. We're, we're going to pour concrete here, then we're going to put concrete blocks up to there and back fill it. So that's the stage we're at now. It's a little, a little more than eight foot by eight foot. It's uh, the smallest room addition I've ever done in my life. Then we're going to backfill everything up to try to get it up to 40 inches of grade. So all that's going to be one good solid foundation. Take a look here. I got my footing poured. If you look down here, I got this concrete poured in here six inches deep and the next thing I'm going to do if you look over here in the truck is I brought the blocks so I'm going to be setting these blocks in here later on like this on top of the footing there you go just like that make a row and frame it out with that. Bring, plan to bring that block up this high. Let me take a look here. I got about 80 blocks, and I got these tiny little bags of mortar mix at 60 pounds. I'm just going to store them in the garage tonight. In the old days. They made everything 80 and 100 pounds, but today a lot of little people are building things and they can't pick up a 100 pound bag. Ah, uh, too bad. <laughs> okay, here I've got the foundation put in. What I have here is six rows of concrete block. And they're eight inches tall each going down 42 inches and I put the footing in first. Right now, to show you more, I backfilled the hole. But if you look here, I put a layer of Vista Queen down. And if you look on it, it's it's wet. This with the gravel on it is a moisture barrier that I want to put in here so water doesn't come up and hit my rafters. Now if you see here on the outside I built a frame, a temporary frame, so my blocks line up really nice and perfect. So even an amateur can build up these frames basically they're just a stud there and a and a piece here. So now when I break these off here I'm gonna have a perfect row where where I lined up my box with so if you're not really a professional I'm not saying that I'm not I'm just saying if you're not a professional you can look your job can look perfect so, I'm going to get this out of here, this frame. I'd like to show you my wall. Right here, take a look at how nice and straight follow down that line this, this turned out to be. So what I've got left to do now is I've got this concrete that's stuck out. This is the day after the pour. 
I want to get all that off. And now I'm going to fill in what's left of these cracks. And that'll be completing this part of the job. I'd like to show you one more thing that I've done that a lot of people don't do. Is I've filled in the block with concrete. I'm going to fill in these. But what I've done is I've filled in the whole wall. So what I have is a very solid concrete wall. This old section here, they're not filled in. But if you take a look here, you instantly see, see this crack here? These things are moving here, here. You should, you should fill this in. It will stop your wall from ever coming apart. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a box here out of two by tens and ply with the top and rebuild the top of this. I'm gonna put plywood over the top of that and roof it. That'll be that. Okay, thank you. here and put another box this way before I put plywood over the top of all this so as to have a real wood deck here that brings me up right to here someplace get plywood over the top of that and I hope to get that part of that done today Okay, now I'm building the box, or the frame, or the flooring. And if you take a look, the first thing I did was I put a two by six on here. On, see these bolts here that were in the concrete? And then, then I put a piece of this on here. It's called sill sealer. And then I bolted that inside. I sandwiched it in here so air doesn't come in the foundation. Because you have air in there, it's gonna be cold. You can see in here the plate and, and a couple of bolts. Now if you look behind you here, I cut a hole into the house. And I'm going to run a heat vent from there all the way to this corner in this rafter. And it's going to come up through the floor here. And then take a look here. I'm spacing these 16 inches on center like this all the way across so now also my insulation will fit in here the, the next thing I'm going to do is I've got a piece of, of fabric that breathes and I'm going to insulate this house by uh, hanging insulation here so I'm just going to tag a piece of fabric in here you can do this several ways. You can use Vista Queen, or you can use a tarp, an old tarp. But if I don't insulate this, it's gonna be a very cold room. So basically, I got some pretty thick six or eight inch insulation here now just stick it in here like this could that be easier and then I'll cut off a piece here like this but I'm done with that part of it so 
if you've ever been like on a front porch or a back porch the floor is always cold so those are the two things that I did I put in the sill sealer Owens Corning I also put in the insulation and now I'm ready to put my floor on here and getting this job done is so easy you can do it yourself anybody can thank you okay I'm gonna show you how to run a heat vent it's so easy that anybody can do it but if you take a look here this is six inch insulated flexible duck you gotta try to find this at a lot of stores six inches the inside diameter take a look at this it comes out 25 feet long kind of kind of stretch it out Remember the hole I made in there? I just shoved that through there. This. Not, it's, it's not building the heat yet. Now look, I bought this hub here. And I look for the inside piece. And I will, I'm not going to actually do it right now, but actually just tape this onto here with duct tape. And then you tape the second layer on and you just install it right here. It can't be any easier. And then I'm going to run it like this. And I'm going to keep it in place by using pipe strap like this. So I'm going to put a piece of pipe strap up underneath it like this from rafter to rafter. Keep it snug where I want it. And run it into the building. So it's going to look like, like this when I'm done. It's insulated. And I'd like to show you how I hook it up to the furnace inside. Okay, if you take a look here, up here you'll see where I've drilled in. I've cut the hole, and here is where I've stuffed the pipe in. So, pretty much, gotta grab that, pull it in like this. Now, I'm gonna show you a trick here. You just you buy this tea, half a tea, and it's made just for doing this. So you just put it in like this and screw it in. And pretty much you do the same thing you did outside. You just put this, I, I'm sorry, you have to cut a hole in here first so it fits. Put that up and put this in. Put this in like this and it, it couldn't be much simpler to putting in heat. You can see that you could do this entire job by yourself. Any amateur can do it in about 20, 30 minutes. Okay, I'm going to tap into this heat vent, take a square screwdriver or a chisel, and a lot of people don't know how to cut a hole. Once you get a hole going, like that, you just grab your pin snips and cut a big round hole here. put it up here you can see right into the heat vent and I'm gonna take what's I call foil tape but you can use duct tape if you don't want to buy this I just put it in here like this gosh can this be any easier anybody can do this but you got this is a ten dollar roll of tape duct tape is five that's why I say you can use duct tape it doesn't matter 
put it in like this. Like that. That's in place. Now I want to put I want to hook this up. I'm trying to have a couple of pieces of tape ready close to me. I don't have to play with the tape once I'm doing this. Now like I said, there's a outside. I mean inside. Slip that baby over there. Fight it just a tiny little bit. Like that. You gotta make sure you leave it down so you have a place for the tape to catch. One band on the outside. And now, you to put the It's pretty easy to make these connections like this. And it's just as easy as I just showed you. There you go. You got heat running out here. The same on the outside. And like I say, a lot of a lot of people don't know this. And a, a heating guy would charge you three to five hundred dollars to do this, and you can do it for under sixty dollars, including the parts, or probably forty-five dollars. Okay, what I've got here is a piece of three-quarter inch tongue and groove flooring. That I'm gonna throw on here. doing if you take a look here you'll see that I've got blocking right here where the seam hits on a solid piece and if you look here that's called a tongue and on the back side is a groove so look here you see there's a groove here so that's called tongue and groove. So where those two seams are, like this, the next one will go inside there, it won't rock up and down. Pretty much, I just line the sheet up, like this, and nail it down, put the next piece on, and I have my deck complete. The only difference is I'm gonna add glue to all the rafters because I don't want to have squeaky floors later on if I put tile down or something. It's got to be very firm. Okay, I'm starting to frame the small room addition. So far, I put the timbers in to make a wall, the bottom plate, the corner post, and at the top, I put a header up here. I'm building these sections on the ground and then I'm installing them. I also have braces to make sure that it's square. If you take a look here, this is a section here that I built on the ground and I lifted it up, put it up here. Now if you also take a look inside here, I'm starting to build the drop down ceiling here with two by sixes across like this, a couple of more, I work my way out. Right now I'm holding the porch up with this little thing here. And it's, uh, it's, it doesn't weigh very much, you can see that. You can lift it off. But in a few minutes, I'll be able to nail it right onto the old, right here. And finally, make this thing secure. I'd like to show you the biggest problem here. If you take a look way, way up there at that rafter, it's actually, it's actually coming off the wall and it's ready to fall. This is really common. They put this thing on and left the siding on here and they toenailed it up there. So a lot of times people that don't know what they're doing do these projects you know if you watch if you watch what we're doing 
you learn how to do these things the right way and possibly not get killed. Okay. Okay, now we've got the rest of the ceiling in. Nice heavy two by sixes. Then the next step is doubling up these rafters here. If you follow all the way up, you can see where they're attached to the house. And I beefed up the blocking up there. And then after that, I put the plywood on the outside of this roof from the other side. Also, I haven't tied this in to the old roof. If you look here, it's still not attached. So I'm gonna put some blocks here and nail them on to here, keep this thing one structure here. Take a look here on the outside. You'll see I have 5 8 inch plywood on the roof. And um, they're cut so they fit on the rafters. I've just got a little bit left to do up there. A little tiny piece. And then that part of the roofing will be done. Okay, this is a piece of roof edge molding that I'm going to place here today. And this gives me a runoff so water doesn't come down the sideboard. It comes out here and then drops off. Also, in conjunction with this, I'm going to cover the piece of wood that's on the side of the roof with J channel. That's this. So it's going to go from there to here like this. And I'll have a beautiful finish outside. Along with that, I'm going to put trim up underneath Right here, I'm going to place this in there, like this, and then I'm going to put slotted soffits in here to give this a really finished look. Pretty soon we'll have a beautiful room addition. Thank you. show you how to assemble soffit, fascia, and starter strip on a building. This is regular siding and it's 12 inches long. First thing you want to do is on the building, you want to take your measurement up there. And I'd like to show you how we assemble all this. What I do is I take what I call a pat. And then I use that straight through the whole length. Make a couple of. Now, I'm lucky I have a saw that I can cut this with. So, a lot of people don't. big to fit in my saw, so I'm making a cut each way, like that. Now that's, that's my piece. Now I want to show you if you're without a saw, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do that. Here's, here's another way, you just take a, a simple pair of tin snips or scissors and just cut it out. So, you're not without the right tools. That doesn't mean you can't do this job. It's very simple. Okay. Now I'd like to
to show you how it actually goes together. I set up a little table here, kind of to show what's going on. First, you would put the J channel on the building. Let's see, right here, like this. And then secondly, once you get the first piece in, you just nail it here, here, and here. Get the next piece in, like that. Now, if you buy what I call J-stock, it, it comes really big. But we're just trying to cover a two by four. So what I did, again with the tin snips, is cut it down. And it just goes up like this. It's very simple, very beautiful. Just shoot it here a couple of times. And that, that kind of is how simple it is to put roofing and flashing. Now look, the last piece is called the roofing starter. That's kind of an L-shaped also. And it just goes on the top of the piece just like this. Now you see that everything I'm doing is upside down. Pretty much go in this order on the roof, like that, and then this goes over the top. And if you take a look down below here, you'll see the whole finished item. Okay. Okay, I'm doing some of the finishing touches on this room addition. What I did is I put a piece of plywood up here for the gable end and a little bit of framing strip. Also, now I'm putting up the soffit and fascia. I put a piece of jade channel up against the building. And then I cut my individual soffit pieces. They're approximately three bars, which is 12 inches this way, and about 10 inches this way. And then I put the outside trim on there and then the last thing I did was put the roofing starter strip on there it's just very simple and it just starts to make the building look professional and finished if you take a look inside here you can see I put a small framing blocks up here to catch the gable end just right there and then the last thing I did was when I showed you the building was lifting, I put these cleats on here. One, two, and three. That ties it all in solid. And this part of the building is done. vinyl siding up now. It's, it's called double four. They're four inches wide and one piece makes two so that's why it's called double four. If you see here we put J channel in. It comes back around this way so you can slide your siding in. On the corner here they sell a special corner 
if you look at it, the siding goes in there. It looks beautiful. You don't have to caulk this job when you're done. And then here again, do you see this piece of J-channel here to frame the windows out? And then, of course, I need to nip these off with my tin snips, but we're just about done with this job. If you see here, remember we took the old patio door and put it over here. You can see that it hasn't been caulked out yet. We're going to wait for spring to do that. But the entire job is all done here. And if you see here, we've tried to line this up with the house so the pattern looks the same. Thank you. And then you can see here the patio door that we moved. If you remember, we put our own windows in, so the, these are relatively inexpensive. The top part is permanent. That's a, a way to get a cheaper window. After that, we came in here and we insulated everything with insulation. All the walls are insulated. All the ceiling is insulated. I'd like to show you another thing that we did here is put in this light switch here for the can lights. Four can, four can lights that are up in the ceiling. And if you take a real good look at a can light, you can see, you see that tape there? That's what we use to put the Tyvek on with here to make sure that there's no air draft. And I bought the more expensive can light. It's called something where they it, it doesn't have a draft in it. So there are cheap can lights and this can light here. After that we put on this layer of half inch drywall right here. And then with that right here we're going to be framing our window here. So this piece of drywall and this across the top are going to be covered here. And this will get framed out, cut out better. And then the last thing is to take a look here. I've got rock on the floor. Before it was just plywood. And this is glued on and screwed on. So there's no squeaks. It's a, it's a very permanent floor. And then we also put two plugs in right here. One here and one on the other side of the room just to have a little bit of power. And the last thing we're going to do is put the baseboard in. Put the heat. We ran the heat underneath the deck. If you look here now, this guy has two heat vents. One on each side. And the, it'll help keep this that was a formerly an old porch very clean and tight and air dry. Okay. And out here... Now, lately, I'd like to show you the blueprint. I'll bring it out here of what we built here. Take a look at the print here. You know, this is the elevation here. So it shows the stairs. And take a look at this. We took this notch out last minute. The customer decided he didn't want it. And we put the floor rafters in here, and then we decked the top of it. And then we put this hand railing on here. I'd like to show you how we did that. We ran these four by fours way down into the ground, four foot. So these are our 10 footers and we cut just a very little off the top. And after that, we put in our framing. And take a look here at our, at our decking. We put it touching. A lot of people put a spacer in there. I'm using galvanized nails for that. They're a lot, lot more a box than the steel ones that would rust on you. But the, the thing is, if you take a look, I'm actually using two by six. I've gotten away from the decking because this is twice the lumber for the same price. And it's, it's easy to convince a customer when you show them the difference in the two types of lumber. If you take a look here, we put lattice in the back, underneath here. We made these frames. And if you take a look way inside there, we replaced that window down there. You can see that's brand new. Like to do that kind of thing before we put our deck in. And that, that's a, uh, uh, called a hopper window, so it opens from the top only, and then you can pull it out in case you have a fire. The person will be able to escape here. If you take a look here, we put on these beautiful spindles and the top 
and this is 2x6 instead of 2x4. So often you'll see a deck where they, they become cheap and put a 2x4 in there, and the top rail is all bent. <laughs> you know, you don't want to have to bring a carpenter back in. And, and my favorite part of this is this, the stairs over here. I don't build them like other guys do with a stringer. I run solid two by sixes for each step. That's a five and a quarter inch rise. I do different two here. I could put a two by eight in here. You can see that I'm overhanging it, or a two by 10. That's what everybody does. These are two by 12s. So they're 11 and a half inches wide. Uh, nothing, nothing more comfortable. Look, look at when you walk up, look at my shoe, I'm 12 inches. It fits all the way in. So if you know how normally you walk up on the stairs, you're right here. Like, like that's not safe. Last thing I did was add these two handrails in here. This is, this is Illinois winter here. So the last thing, you can't grab these things here. They're so big. It's not going to help you at all. This is skinny here, a little, little two inch. And then I ran them a little longer for your first step when you're coming up, you can grab that down here. That's a feature that very, very few people put on there. Okay, now here, if you take a look at the elevation, I've drawn the railing in the end of the deck, and that, there it is right there. Completed. And then, on the drawing, I also drew the back elevation. I'd like to go back here and show you the perspective of that. Now here's the drawing of the deck before we built it. And it's one inch equals one foot. And here's the completed deck. If you take a look, it's almost identical to the drawing. See the stairs are here, the railings over here, and the the brand new windows hiding down there, the new lattice trim across the top, and all the spindles and the railings are all in place. So it's good to know what you're gonna build before you build it. Most important thing is, be safe.